Hi there, Eric Backer, naturopath. Thanks for coming back. A question I get asked so many times by patients is the frequency of cleansing, the candida cleanse frequency. How often should I do a cleanse? Should I do a cleanse every week, every month, every year, twice a year? You know, how often should I do it? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I don't walk around cleaning the house like five times a day. You know, I clean the house when there's crap lying around everywhere, then I clean it up. Or, you know, if I'm tripping over stuff. Or if my bookshelves eventually one day fall down that everyone thinks they're going to, you know, crap out on me. So cleansing is required when obviously a cleanse is required. So how do you know you need a cleanse? Well, you need a cleanse when you're feeling below par, when your health is bad, when you've taken a lot of medications, when you've been sick for a long time. But a cleanse is not only required in those situations. A cleanse is very intelligent if you do a cleanse once per year. But that does not have to be a candida cleanse, okay? There can be an overall rejuvenation or detox like I'm doing right now. It's springtime in New Zealand. So now's the perfect time for me. You know, we're spring leading into summer. It's a great time for me now to change how I eat, increase my intake of some green smoothies for two weeks, you know, look at a bit of liver and kidney detoxification. That's entirely different from a candida cleanse, all right? A candida cleanse means we've detected candida, so A, we're a positive for a candida in the gut, all right? We're not making assumptions here, we're a positive. We're using a targeted protocol, and we've worked out exactly what we're going to take and for how long we're going to take it for, and then we're going to reassess that digestive system. We're not going to make assumptions. Too many people make assumptions. They say, oh, I've got candida. I need to go on a candida detox. And then when they've done that, they do another one and another one, or they stay on it for 12 months. I've had people stay on these crazy diets for four or five years. I mean, how dumb is that? GAPS diet. It'd be a big gap in my life if I went on a diet like that for five years. It'd be terrible. Imagine that. It's almost like, you know, what kind of lifestyle is that? You know, being on some type of crazy diet for a prolonged period of time, thinking that you're cleansing, or going on repetitive diets, or changing tack, going on a candida cleanse, stopping that, going on a gallbladder flush. So why do people have this incessant need for constant flushes and cleanses all the time? If I go to your house, are you going to be constantly in the bathroom, on the floor, on your knees, scrubbing the floor you know, every single day? Come on, folks. We don't need to cleanse as much as you think we do. We need to cleanse our diet and lifestyle perpetually by understanding that if we are careful with what we eat and what we drink and how we live, we don't need to constantly cleanse all the time. And if we're very careful with medications we take and how we travel and hygiene, we can cut back on a ton of different parasites and bacteria and yeast from overproliferating in our gut. So the candida cleanse frequency, in my opinion, is only when you need it. You do a cleanse when you need it. Preferably, if you can, you, you assess the gut pre and post treatment to see where you're going, what direction you're going. And then maybe you need to do some fine, you know, some fine tuning or a little bit of peripheral cleansing or side cleansing when you've finished your major candida cleanse. I'm not a fan of people constantly doing gallbladder flushes, constantly doing colonics, constantly doing coffee enemas. I see this so often in my clinic over the years. I've seen this on YouTube, you know. Some people do these cleanses constantly. It's like they're never stopping cleansing. I mean, for goodness sakes, what's left to clean if you've cleaned everything up? The beneficial bacteria, that's what you're getting rid of. I can tell you this. I know many people over the years that I have seen, in fact, have ruined their cleanse by overextending the cleanse or going for too long or too hard, You know, particularly when they involve coffee enemas or, or colonics with their cleanses and do those repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. You're washing away all the good as well as the bad. So just be careful with repeated cleanses or long continued cleanses. How long do you do a candida cleanse for? It depends on your personal situation. I had a patient from Israel, I might have mentioned um, already once or twice in videos, with five different types of candida in the stool, with three types of parasites and multiple bad bacteria. Now this man, incredible how he pushed himself for eight weeks to clean the gut up you know almost superhuman something out of marvel comics or something this guy is just almost like a machine but that's few and far between eight weeks of just pushing the heck out of his gut and he cleaned the gut up it's not something i recommend everybody do i've got other people who have to do a cleanse 
more slowly and more carefully and a bit more prolonged because they're very sensitive. Or maybe their lifestyle doesn't fit in, you know, with the cleanse like the Israeli man did. So each to their own. But the take home message for this video is A, don't do repeated cleanses or flushes because it's usually counterproductive. And B, tailor the length and duration of your program and the severity of treatment according to what you've found in your gut. Don't make assumptions. Thanks for tuning in.